Hey guys, Sarah here. So it is time for the long awaited video of how to take care of eggs once they've been laid and also how to take care of the females after they laid eggs. I did a breeding video a couple months ago. I'll link that above if you guys would like to go see it. And also some of the members got some like little special videos that were more uncut and a little bit more uh, focused on specific snakes. So if you'd like to become a member, I would really appreciate that. It helps so much and you guys get your own exclusive content as well. If you can't become a member because you don't have the money, it's $2 a month, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's not going to detract from anything you get on the channel. Everybody still gets access to that educational content. Now I wanna start off this video by talking about little specific things that I may have missed in all of the following recordings that will come after this. Uh, similar to the breeding video, I recorded like my snakes doing their thing and I kinda wanna show that to you guys so you can kind of see the process a little bit better. I did not put any videos of snakes actually laying eggs. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because the females can become very stressed out if you interrupt them in the middle of laying and it can cause them to become egg bound. And you do not want that. You do not want your snakes to become egg bound. It can kill them. It is probably the leading cause of death in uh, adult females in my collection so far. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of deaths from egg binding. Uh, I think that I can recall two, maybe three over the last 12 years, but it does happen. And when it happens, you want to make sure that you take care of that snake. The first thing that you can do to prevent it is to just not interrupt them when they are laying. That is going to be the best way to prevent an egg binding situation is if you walk in and you peep into her little hide wherever she is and you notice that she is sitting on eggs, ju just try to not interrupt her. It's really okay to let those eggs sit there, especially if she's laid in a place that has a reasonable temperature and humidity. It's okay to let her sit there for six to eight hours just to make sure that she's done laying. I made a video uh, a little while ago on how to make a hide box for your females that are getting ready to lay. So I will link that above for you guys to go check that out if that will help you prepare for your females to lay eggs. Before your females lay eggs and after they've bred, you want to maybe up their feeding a little bit more and the males may not be eating that much at all. It's okay if the males do not eat during breeding season or even a little bit after they're done breeding. Males typically will Will not be eating as much during that time so don't worry too much about them even if a male isn't a breeding male uh, and you notice that in the springtime he goes off food for a few weeks that's completely normal do not worry about him when you have a female that has bred it's important to make sure that she gets enough food and especially calcium in her diet i like to add a little bit extra i actually really like to feed reptilinks to my females who are gravid reptilinks are whole ground prey in a collagen casing uh, grinding up that food especially the bones and fur and feathers in that food uh, allow for the snake's body to access the calcium in that food better than if it was just whole bones and so reptilinks are really really good for females who are gravid, especially when they're making those eggs, that extra calcium, instead of that calcium being pulled from other places in their bodies, like bones or their teeth or anything else, um, it's just going to come out of the reptilinks and the bones in the reptilinks. So that's one reason that I really like that. And yes, of course, corn snakes digest bone normally anyway, but it's so much easier for their body to access it with the reptilinks. And if you would like to try reptilinks, I do have a code. It is sarahsnake27 at reptilinks.com. You get a discount. I get a discount. It helps you. It helps me. And um, I really, truly believe in this product. I have been using it for years. Like since the moment that I heard about it, I have used it. You can look back on my channel. I have multiple reviews on it and I talk a lot about it. And so I definitely recommend anybody who um, runs a rescue for animals, maybe you get animals in that are emaciated, reptilinks are really going to help you get those snakes back on track. I have also rescued snakes in the past and reptilinks really help them gain weight. For those of you who have used my code before, it used to be different, but the old code does not work anymore. They have changed their system up. So uh, do not try to use the old code if you go. The new code is sarahsnake27 if you would like to use that. I'm not gonna linger on this too long, but I did want to mention it because for me, it has become an integral part of the breeding process for me and my snakes. And I think that the snakes are healthier after laying eggs when they eat reptilinks and the eggs are healthier and the babies are bigger and healthier when the mom has been on reptilinks while she's gravid. So I really believe in this and I think it would be really great if other people tried it as well. Uh, moving on. Uh, setting up an incubator can also be a little bit tricky uh, if you do not have a place where you can just naturally incubate. I like to incubate my eggs 
in an ambient room, which is just the snake room. My snake room stays between 80 to 84 degrees. So it's really fine to incubate the snake eggs in there as well, um, because that's the perfect temperature for incubating eggs. I actually prefer to stay a little bit on the lower side. So I usually actually keep my snake room closer to that 80 to 82 range when I'm incubating eggs. It doesn't bother the snakes. Um, it's just healthier for the eggs, in my opinion, to uh, incubate them at a slightly lower temperature. The lowest temperature that I feel is safe for incubating eggs is 78 degrees, but people have done it at even lower temperatures. Keep in mind that the lower the temperature, the longer it's going to take for the snake to actually develop. So if you're aiming for that 60 to 65 day range, I have noticed that the 83, 82 to 83 degrees is really good for that. Um, and if you are aiming for a little bit longer, more like the 70 to 75 days, maybe incubate them a little bit lower. I know people who prefer to incubate at 78 degrees and uh, have that longer period of time. And that usually means that they will be a little bit bigger when they hatch. You do not want to go over like 84, maybe 85 degrees with eggs. Uh, I had a friend who used to incubate corn snake eggs at like 86 degrees and he often had a lot of like kinks with his babies. The babies came out smaller. Uh, they just generally didn't seem to be quite as healthy when that happened. Uh, and sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes your thermostat doesn't work and uh, the thing just gets a little bit hotter than you expected. Whatever, it happens. But in my opinion, it's best to stay within the low 80s. Maybe right around 81, 80 to 82 degrees seems to be the best. After the female lays her eggs, it's also really important to make sure that you physically put her in or near her water bowl. She is usually very thirsty. She has depleted her body laying eggs and usually she does not want to move once she is done laying those eggs but normally they are very thirsty when they're done so I like to pick up the female once I know that they're completely done laying eggs pick her up very gently and place her in or near her water bowl so that she can just very easily put her head down to get a drink um, it's just you know I mean eventually she will move around on her own and such but um, I think it's vitally important to take care of those females after they lay eggs. And if that just simply means giving a small sip of water for them, then it's a very small thing that you can do to really benefit their lives. I'm not going to go over how to make your own incubator in this video. I do not think that people who are beginners should be making their own incubators. I recommend you go and you buy an actual reptile egg incubator that can handle all of that. It's worth the money, uh, especially if you're just doing this as a hobby and for fun. You're not trying to make money. You're not saving a whole lot of money. Um, if you are a first time uh, snake breeder or if you are relatively new to it or sometimes I've had people that just drop off a clutch of eggs and if you're just trying to incubate those eggs just put the money in for a really good incubator you will not regret it the first time that I tried to actually make my own incubator and use it it was a very big failure for me I mentioned that in one of my previous videos where I was talking about uh, a book that I was reviewing and in that book it does tell you how to set up an incubator you can go watch that video and I highly recommend buying that book by the way um I gave it an 8 out of 10 it was so it was so good for its tiny size you could sit down and read it in just like an hour or less I highly recommend buying it and in there there is information on how to make your own incubator if that's a direction that you want to go in um I would not go in that direction unless you are a seasoned veteran in um, incubating corn snake eggs just so you know exactly what those eggs are going to need. You want to make sure there's high humidity pretty much the whole time that those eggs are incubating but if the humidity gets a little bit low it's not terrible. I'll go over that in some of the following videos. After the female is done laying um, she will shed again very soon and you want to give her a meal, a small meal, a few days after she lays eggs to get her jump started again. There's a good chance that she will not have eaten for two to three weeks before laying eggs, and some females go off food their entire pregnancy. They won't eat the whole time. So it's very important that you have your females at a good weight before breeding them, and then also, if they do continue to eat through their pregnancy, feed them about, I don't want to say double, but about one and a half what you would normally feed them. Pretty much what I did was I would feed them on their normal day, and then on another day, three or four days later, in the middle of the week, I would thaw out a bunch of fuzzy mice just to give them that little extra boost for females that were not on Reptilinks. Otherwise, I would just give them a second Reptilink. 
After your female starts taking food again, you can start putting her back on her normal feeding schedule. Uh, she might shed, like I said, shortly after she lays, so she may not eat a big meal the same week that she sheds, but after that, go ahead and feed her one and a half again what you were feeding her normally. Um, when I say normally, um, I mean normally I feed each of my snakes one meal item a week and I get the appropriate sized meal for them and just feed them that once a week. But with females that are um, gravid or had just laid, I feed them that one and a half until their eggs hatch. And I know that sounds like a weird thing to do, like kind of arbitrary, Part of the reason that I do this is because some snakes will double clutch on their own. And in fact, I do have a female that I believe is going to double clutch on her own. Uh, I'm not going to have that last clutch in this video just because um, of time restriction. I wanted to get this video out a little bit sooner, uh, but it's the same care for a female that has a double clutch as a female that only lays one clutch. Uh, but just keep in mind, like, they might do that. And if they do double clutch, normally they will lay that clutch right around the same time that their first clutch actually starts hatching. So that's why I feed my females, you know, a time and a half um, until their eggs are done hatching, just in case I get a female that double clutches. Uh, Cause I, I used to just go back to feeding their normal feeding schedule. And then occasionally I would get a female that would double clutch. And I felt really bad that I wasn't giving her that extra food that she needed because I didn't know that she was gravid. I do not purposely double clutch my females and I don't recommend that anyone does double clutch their females, but other people have done it. They do do it. They will breed a female uh, shortly after she lays her first clutch of eggs. And and some people will even do it a couple times a year, have them double or triple clutch. I don't recommend doing that. It just is a thing that happens, so keep it in mind. If your female double clutches, uh, just do basically the same thing that you were doing. Uh, feed her time and a half until her eggs hatch. Now, there is always a chance that a female is going to double and maybe even triple clutch, uh, and all of those eggs will be infertile. If that's the case, just feed them like time and a half for about another uh, eight weeks, about another two months, I would say, because um, eggs usually hatch between 60 and 70 days. And so if you kind of hit that 60 day mark, that two month mark, that's usually good enough if you're not expecting any more babies to hatch from those eggs. Keep in mind that a mother snake is not usually going to put quite as much of her bodily energy into the infertile eggs, but she still will put enough of her bodily energy into that that she needs the extra boost in food. And I've had some people ask me, what do you do with infertile eggs when they are laid? And the answer is I feed them to my cats. They become cat food here. Uh, I usually make my own cat food. I have an African serval mix. Uh, he is a Savannah cat and he needs a mostly raw diet. So um, adding in snake eggs is really nothing unusual for him this time of year. Thankfully this year I have a 100% fertility rate, except for maybe one egg that's like still kind of being weird. Not really sure if it's good or not, but it's still going strong. Uh, regardless, uh, if you do have infertile eggs, you can pretty much do whatever. You can throw them away. You can turn them into cat food or dog food. Uh, you can feed them to other animals. I know there are some lizards and things like that that will eat eggs. And so those are also things that you could do with an infertile egg. Um, use your imagination. You know, I've actually seen some people eat infertile uh, snake eggs. So that's also possible. I don't recommend it, uh, but I've never tried it. So what do I know? Usually the infertile eggs will be very uh, small, soft, squishy. When you pick them up, they'll fold, they'll buckle under your, your fingers. They'll be so squishy that you can like almost just squish all the way through them. More squishy than a grape. Really nothing that I can use to describe what it feels like, but they kind of feel like really tiny water balloons that haven't been filled up all the way. And so when you pick them up, they're like really squishy and almost hard to hold in a way because they don't have enough fluid in them. Uh, and they're usually yellow. They're usually not white. A healthy snake egg will usually be all white, but I have seen some that had like some patches where you could almost see through them. You could kind of see the veins through just the shell. And uh, there's almost, there's multiple layers to the shells. There's the internal layer, which is really soft. And then there's the outer layer, which is a little bit more hard. And so sometimes if a female doesn't get as much calcium as she needed, that outer layer will be a bit thinner and you can kind of see through the egg a little bit. Um, usually 
usually that means that you definitely need to be giving more care to that female specifically. She needs more calcium. You could even get a calcium supplement. You don't want to overdo it on any supplements like that for your snakes, but it is a good idea to have them on hand for snakes that pretty obviously need that extra boost. I'm going to jump into the videos of my snakes with their eggs and all of that stuff. Uh, that has a lot of good information in it too that I did not go over here. So I do highly recommend you watch those or at least listen. I know a lot of people listen to my videos more like a podcast. And once again, I'm going to have a lot more content uh, recorded that I can't just fit into this video. This video is already getting very long just with this initial explanation. So uh, anything that's extraneous will be put together and put up for members only over the next few weeks. So again, if you would like to see those, you can become a member. If you become a member for like one month, you should be able to get all of these specific videos. So if that's something that you're really interested in, uh, just a one month subscription will do that. Uh, and if you're interested in other things that I might put out in the future or things that I've put out in the past, that is also an option for you. But again, it's not going to take away from the education on the channel. It's just going to keep this video from being so long. So thank you for watching. I'm heading over to the next video now. Hey everybody. So I'm in the snake room again um, with terrible makeup and hair and everything, but um, it is March 29th and we had our first snake shed, like pre lay shed today. Um, and I'm I don't know, it feels like it's so soon. I think that maybe she was kind of in shed when she bred. This is Splinter, uh, the girl that did not brewmate. So it could be that this is the pre-lay shed or it could have just been like a random shed. And she did breed, but her shed cycle might be a little bit off, but I'll show her to you. Okay, so there she is um, and her shed skin is like over there. I need to clean out her enclosure, but there she is. She's doing pretty good. Been looking around, but she hasn't been like nesting that much like she hasn't been moving around bedding and stuff so it could just be that our shed cycle is off or it could be that this is a pre-lay shed we don't know yet we'll find out pretty soon there she is such a pretty girl i know i know you're so pretty look at you hi yeah pretty girl look at her i just love her she's so sweet she's so cute all right <laughs> Hey guys, it is Sunday, May, uh, April 3rd, and that pre-lay shed was a pre-lay shed, and I was not expecting it. I'm over here just like, okay, yeah, I'm feeding the snakes, whatever, and I open Splinter's enclosure, and this is what I see. So um, I'm going to quickly uh, set up a box for these eggs. These eggs look pretty fresh still, but I haven't like taken the top off or anything. Um, and I'll quickly show you guys how I set up egg, um, egg holding enclosures, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so I'm starting with one of these, um, food enclosures. This is also, um, like, this is just a regular food storage container that you can buy in bulk on Amazon. There's holes in the side. This is also what I use for baby hatchling snakes as well. So, um, I'm going to be using these to put eggs in this time. Okay, I've moved the entire lay box out and just um, out where there's more space. This substrate is the same type of mixture that's in here. It's 50% perlite, 50% vermiculite. Um, and so that's what I use for both lay boxes and for egg boxes. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to try to get the eggs from Mama. I don't want to disturb her as much as possible but um, I want to not rotate the eggs at all, if, if, if at all possible. So um, there are some kind of looser ones here, and she is tightening grip. So this is where you gotta be careful because since there's loose eggs, they're not all sticking together. Um, that doesn't always necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It just means that they're not all sticking together. But if they don't stick together, she's, she's gonna try really hard to not let you take the eggs, which is, you know, just kind of see how she moves around when I'm touching them. She's not being mean, obviously, but she's resisting me taking them, which is an instinct. It's not, like, cruel to take them. The corn snakes do not incubate their own eggs like some uh, pythons and snakes like that. So you want to take the eggs from her. See, she's doing that, and you got to be careful when there are loose eggs because the mama is going to jerk and you don't want them to roll. All right, looks like the rest of them are stuck together pretty well. Gonna just be careful. Oh, 
Okay, all right, we've got them very gently here. Gonna have to move this one over a little bit. Okay, uh, I am going to candle all of them, uh, and I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. But I want to see, I want to make sure that she hasn't rotated them up to this point and make sure that they're all um, facing in the right direction. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so I have a little flashlight like this one. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere, but I do like, I don't like how, um, see how this has like notches in the end. I use this one because this is the one that I can find. Uh, I had another one that did not have these notches. I prefer not having the notches, just for anyone's future reference. Okay, I turned the main light off, and what I'm going to do is candle them. So, um, I don't know if you can really tell, but um, there, you can kind of see almost through them, and I'm going to look, just rotate a little tiny bit and look for veins. Um, and this might not be a fertile egg. I'm not really seeing any veins in it, no matter how, where I rotate it. Um, this side might have veins. It's a little bit darker red on the top. Um, so like right in this area is where I'm seeing what could be veins. So that's the area that I'm going to have facing up. And I'm going to do the same with the other ones. Um, especially the loose ones. Any of them that are all together, I'm not going to worry too much about. Alright, and you notice a little bit um, on this egg. Um, you can't really see it without the light, but there's this patch up here at the top. Um, it's a little thin there, but that's not a huge deal. Um, the egg overall looks healthy. Sometimes they do get these little, like, snowflake looks on them. Um, sometimes that can indicate that the mom didn't have enough calcium, which I would find hard to believe because she had a lot of big meals when she was gravid. So I'm just slowly looking for anything that resembles veins. Alright, it looks like we might have some here. It is difficult to tell, but that's the side that was pretty close to facing the top originally, so that's where we're going to keep it now as well. Um, same with this one. I'm really hoping that these are not just all empty eggs. It seems like maybe, if that's the case, we might have just missed her ovulation, uh, which would suck, but it is what it is. Okay, so it looks like on this egg, there's more veins like on this side than anywhere else. It could be that the shells are preventing us from seeing veins super well. I'm not going to rotate these, but we'll see. I'm hoping that it's just because the veins are young. Like that one, oh, you can't see, sorry. This one here definitely has veins. So, like, there's a lot of them that I'm definitely seeing veins in. You may not be able to tell, really, from the way that I'm doing this here, but I have other videos on my channel that show that a little bit better. So I will link that above for you guys. So yeah, we have our first clutch of eggs, uh, and I'm going to just make sure that this, I might put a little bit more moisture in this, but otherwise, uh, now we just wait for incubation. Okay, so what I have done with them is I have separated them. Now, I don't always separate eggs, and I honestly recommend don't separate your eggs. Um, there's really no much of a reason to do it. The reason I did it with these is because they were kind of not sticking together very well anyway, which uh, it happens occasionally. I've gotten some whole clutches of eggs that were all just loose eggs. That's unusual. It's it's more typical for them to stick together, but these just didn't very much. Uh, and some of them that were even in the clump that were all connected, it was obvious that one of them, you know, that they had like turned at some point while she was laying them. And so I just wanted to make sure that we covered all of our bases. I'm not exactly sure when these eggs were laid, um, I have been gone this last weekend for the last few days, so uh, it could have been yesterday or it could have been two or three days ago uh, because I was out of town. I just couldn't, you know, I, and I didn't even know really if that was her pre lay shed, and she looked normal. She looked tiny for her. She's a big snake, but she didn't look like she was super gravid, so I wasn't expecting eggs anyway. Um, so I went ahead and buried them um, a lot. Not a, not a whole lot. Like, you don't want them to be completely buried. They do need to have oxygen exchange. Uh, but I also made sure that the uh, bedding was moist. And um, I'm just going to put them up on a shelf 
and weight. Uh, the snake room that I have, it's at 83 degrees in here, which is a pretty good incubating temperature. And uh, so, yeah, um, since there's holes in the sides of this, see there's a hole there, uh, there's a hole there. Since this is the type of enclosure that I uh, keep babies in anyway, there's already holes in the sides. And so you're going to get oxygen exchange in there regardless. And I uh, just have to make sure that I keep them humid. Uh, not super humid. You don't want them to drown, but humid enough that they stay plump. They will continue to grow. So if you are planning on having eggs and breeding snakes, you want to make sure that whatever container you put the eggs in to incubate them, that as they plump up, they will not actually hit the top because the top will get uh, condensation on it. And that condensation can pool on top of the eggs and potentially drown the baby snake inside. So that's just a pro tip, is to be careful about the height of the lid. And if you notice that the eggs get so plump that they start touching the height, the top of the lid, or the bottom of the lid, you might want to put them in a different container. The next thing I do is I label the container with the parents, the day the eggs were laid, the expected hatch date, which I usually count two months plus a few days. Uh, so um, it's 3-3, three, three, so I decided for 5-5-22. Five, five, uh, they may not hatch on that exact date, it's just a general, like, sometime probably within that week. Uh, it's usually in here, it's usually about 65 days. Uh, so this is pretty close. It's just kind of like a, hey, around that time, that's when you should start checking. Uh, and 12 eggs, all good. Uh, if there were any slugs, I would have written um, like, you know, let's say 10 eggs, two slugs or something like that on here instead. But we got 12 eggs and to me, they all look good. None of them look like obvious slugs and I was able to find veins in all of them. So we have 12 eggs, all good. And as uh, incubation goes. If anything is weird, I will mark it uh, somewhere on here, like maybe not on this tag, but I might make another tag saying like, um, you know, on this date, two eggs went bad or something like that. So just, you know, that's how I label mine. It makes it easy to know what clutch that you have. And of course, if you have the parent's information, then you're already going to know that. Uh, some people like to write out all of the parent information. So like Anne Marie Motley, Het, uh, a male stripe to blah 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 like they'll write the whole thing down on here but I just write the parents names and that's part of the reason why I actually like name my snakes is to keep track easier of all of the clutches that I hatch I know a lot of big breeders um, and even some small breeders don't really like to name all of their snakes but I name all my snakes so that's that's what we've got right now so the next thing that I will do after this is I will check on the female. I'm going to feel her underbelly, uh, just sort of let her crawl through my hands a little bit and see if she has any more eggs left in her. It's unlikely. Uh, it looked like she was done laying. It didn't look like she had any more, but I am going to double check. And then um, I'm going to make sure that she is offered a small meal. Uh, she's used to eating like a large mouse or like a day old chick. I'll probably feed her like a medium sized mouse uh, or maybe like a quail. We'll see if she takes either of those. She may not, but it is important to make sure that you do the aftercare for your female as well. She needs to be uh, shown her water bowl. She should be offered a meal. She will shed uh, about a week after laying um, and a lot of people will wait till after she sheds, uh, but I like to feed her, they like, try to feed her at least before she sheds. I also like to let the females keep their lay boxes until after that shed, partially because it will just help with the shedding process in general as a moist box, but uh, it also is just like less stress. They already have a place where they have made a little nest for themselves and they can recover from laying eggs in that. Yeah, I just put that mouse in front of her and she went right after it, so that's a good sign. Uh, after she's done eating, um, I'll pull her up, I'll check on her to make sure there's no more eggs. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, what do you mean you're going to handle her after she eats? It's okay, uh, I'm not worried about it. Um, she's a very, very docile snake, she's not very easily stressed, so she's not going to regurge her meal just because of that, uh, just because I pick her up. So yeah, that's that's what I plan to do. And like I said, it doesn't really look like she has any more eggs. And a lot of times if females do have eggs, they will not just eat like this, like if they are still trying to push out eggs. Um, and normally if there's any eggs left, I would be seeing a bulge in this area of her tail um, where an egg would be, but I don't see anything. Uh, it actually kind of looks like she's got a little bit of loose skin, which is usual 
um, right after they lay. So it looks like she's done. Um, if, if that's different, I will um, show you guys. I also want to do an update on Splinter's eggs here. Most of them are looking really good. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's pretty obvious to me that these do have veins in them. Except for this one that I put off to the side a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it is a little bit more yellow with a little bit less of like the veiny red. Uh, but it was one that I kind of wondered when she laid it if it was good or not. So I kind of set it off uh, to the side of the other one. And it is kind of getting a little bit of slime on it. I don't know if you can tell just by looking at this, but um, it may not be good. It may not have ever been good, uh, but that's why it's over to the side now. Uh, but the rest of them, uh, I want to see if I can maybe get my camera to focus on on this. Like You can see that there's pretty good veins in these. So this is the only one that's like mm, looks kind of empty. So either way, there's Splinter's eggs. Most of them are looking pretty good. So. I'm excited about that. At the very least, it looks like we'll have 11 good babies out of this clutch so far. Here's how the first clutch of eggs are looking now. They're all still looking pretty good. Uh, you may not be able to tell in the video just because of the lighting, but this egg up in the corner, um, I still suspect is probably not alive. Uh, it still looks somewhat okay, but it is starting to get a little bit of like a slimy sort of feel to the outside of it. Uh, which usually means that it's not alive on the inside, but um, it's still like anyone's game, I think. Um, it's not quite as like vibrant red though when I candle it. So I'm thinking it's still probably a dead egg, but I like to wait and make absolutely sure because you, sometimes you just never know. Um, and they, it is a little bit away from the rest of them just like in case because I don't want, um, I, like more normally like mold and stuff does not affect healthy eggs, but it's kind of a just in case for me. I like to separate any known dead eggs away from the rest of the clutch. All right, I just wanna show you, this is that first clutch of eggs. I also put another layer on top for them so they stay a little bit more moist. But this is the egg that I was having trouble with and I don't know if you can tell, but it's definitely yellow green in there. And it looks like there at the top in the middle, um, it used to be like a fertile good egg, but it might have died because uh, if it was one of the earlier ones to lay, the mom might have just rolled it um, there was a couple of them that I had to turn over, and who knows how long this one sat rolled, I don't know. Um, but I imagine that it was fertile when it was laid, and um, just because the eggs didn't stick together, this one probably just, uh, yeah, wasn't going to make it because it got rolled or who knows what. So um, so this clutch is more like 11 eggs now, would have been 12, but you know, it, you win some, you lose some. I am going to leave it just for a little while because you never know but I am still like I said it's, it's just a little bit separated from all the rest of them just in case. All right I think this is going to be the last video on the egg incubating. Um, this is the first clutch that's due to hatch. Don't worry we will have hatching videos when that comes around that'll be um, the eggs will be hatching in about a month uh, but that probably means that I won't be able to give you guys the hatching video for like six weeks or maybe two months but I wanted to show you um, this was the egg that I wondered if it was fertile or not, and I don't think it is. I have candled it a few times, and it's just kind of getting yellow green on the inside, and I you can kind of tell if you look at it next to these other eggs that it is more yellowed, and this black spot on the top is where the embryo would have been, but it's just black. It's just a black spot, and even when I candle it, this whole top is just black. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing there. Uh, so I'm probably, I'll keep the egg in here like this, but um, if you have infertile eggs, you can throw them out or you can, um, like at this stage, I would either keep them to see if something hatches, which it probably won't because I don't see any veins still. Um, and like they're only, they're over halfway through incubating right now, I think. And so um, they should, like I should be seeing veins, but I'm not. Uh, but if you get any that are like laid as infertile, um, you can use them for food for cats or dogs. Um, it's not going to hurt them if you do that. Uh, or you can toss them. I, in, in my life, I hate throwing anything away that can be used for anything else. So um, I normally mix them in with my cat's food. I have an elderly cat who can only eat raw. And having a little egg sometimes doesn't hurt him. Um, and it's just a little treat. Uh, sometimes um, you could try to feed to other snakes. Snakes that might eat eggs. I haven't tried feeding it to corn snakes. Um, but I've had some king snakes in the past that would eat a, an infertile uh, corn snake egg. Um, so that's an option. Um, or, like I said, you could just toss them. Uh, but, 
either way, just thought I would kind of give you guys this last video. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. Um, I hope that it was straightforward enough. If you guys have any questions in the comments, please let me know. I would be happy to answer them. I keep track of my comments pretty rigorously. So um, I go through and I try to answer every single comment at least once. I can't always go back and like comment again, but I do at least reply to the first comment anytime someone asks. So uh, if you have any of those questions, please put them down below. And like I said, like, share, subscribe, do all of this stuff. And I will see you in the next video, which I believe is going to be a more deep dive. But again, I don't remember which one it's going to be yet. So I'll see you then. <laughs>